Alright guys, so in this video we're checking out the SkyZone Cobra X FPV goggles. So these are um, box goggles, and if you're just looking at the box goggle category, these are probably the, I would say, the, the best box goggles out there out of all the ones that are currently on the market. Uh, and I'll explain all the reasons why that is. Now, uh, you know, given the fact that a lot of you guys probably are using like fat shark style goggles with two screens and the um the different kind diff totally different type of optics compared to box goggles uh this is you know probably not the video for you but for some people box goggles are their only option because fat shark style goggles just don't work for them so you know this is a standard disclaimer for all my fpv goggle videos is that this might be the perfect goggle for you or this might be absolutely terrible for you. It just it just depends on a lot of factors and most of them have to do with how it fits on your face and whether or not your eyes can focus on the screen and be able to see the stuff that's on the screen very clearly. That I can't tell you if, if this is going to work for you or not. I can only explain to you uh, my experience and you know maybe you can use that to guide your buying decision in this but you know standard disclaimer this might be great or this might be terrible. But in terms of the functionality and the features, um, you know, the, the build quality, all that, this is, in my opinion, probably the best one out there for in the box goggle category. There's, this comes in two different models. There's the Cobra X, which is the one you see here in black, and then there's the Cobra S, which is in white, which is a lower end model. So uh, the X here is going to probably run, depending upon coupon codes and discounts, roughly 200 to 220 ish dollars, somewhere in that price range. Um, the Cobra S, which is the lower end, uh, will run probably 150, 160, and also it depends on coupons and everything. But the the back of the box here kind of explains all the difference in specs, and they obviously they use the same box for. Both of them, so the Cobra X here is one we're going to talk about in this video, but if you want to see what is different about the Cobra S and what you get for basically less money is you're going to get a smaller screen. So they both come with a 4.1 inch screen LCD. Uh, the X comes with a higher resolution 1280 by 720 screen, and the S only comes with an 800 by 480 screen. They both come with the same steady view uh, diversity receiver. The DVR is better on the X, which is H.264 at 30 frames per second, whereas the S comes with sort of like the old school, you know, um, DVR that Fat Shark and a lot of other, um, you know, DVRs are like the M, M, it's basically called Motion JPEG compression. So it's a lower quality DVR, so it's also cheaper. They all run off the same sort of power setup here, which is, uh, I'll explain in the video. The language that you'll see in the OSD, you have 10 languages available on the Cobra X, but on the OSD for the S, you only get Chinese and English. So if you need other languages, then you're going to be out of luck on that. And the other thing that's not shown here is that the screen on the S um, is not switchable. So it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen. So if you have a 4 by 3 camera, you can't switch it to 4 by 3 mode where it gives you the black bars on the side, whereas you can on the X. So the X is switchable between 16x9 and 4x3. I'll show you that in the demo here in a minute. In a minute. But so if you have a 4x3 camera and you don't want that stretched out, you can switch the monitor into 4x3 mode and uh, your 4x3 camera will be uh, presented to you in the correct aspect ratio. You can't do that on the cheaper S version. So I think that pretty much breaks down all the differences. Now, what comes in the box, of course you get a great manual. As usual, you get um, this uh, XD60 to power cable. So this is for like a Fat Shark style barrel adapter. That's for powering the goggles and that, there's a multiple ways that the goggles can be powered. And you get an AV uh, in out cord here for sending the video out to say another DVR or some other screen. You get a USB-C type cable. This is for charging. You get uh, two of these standard whip antennas. Um, you know, people will complain, well, why are they giving us these? We're going to throw these away anyway. And the reason why they give you these is because um, there's going to be people that complain, well, why didn't they give us any antennas at all? And so you, you basically, the, the manufacturers can't win, so they always include these, or typically will usually include these. But I'm recommending that you're going to probably want to switch them 
to pretty much any kind of other antenna that's circularly polarized, circularly polarized. I went with these. These are the uh, Fox Ear Pagoda antennas that have the long, um, basically the long stem here. And that's to get it away from your face and your head because your head kind of blocks the signal. And then this allows you to bend it and make, make sort of like this V shape here. So you have like an angle, gives you the best coverage and the best signal. So this, I'll link down in the description, this whole bunch of uh, circularly polarized antennas that come with this sort of long style uh, antenna or uh, stem. This is what I would recommend so you can kind of get it away from your face. And these will give you the best reception and performance in terms of reception. That's what I flew with. I didn't fly with the um, stock antennas. And um, the last thing is you get your standard AVN out cable. This is again to send your signal out to uh, a DVR or something or if you want to get uh, in, in a signal input you can do that as well. Um, you get these little foam pads. So this is uh, an extra foam pad for the nose area and then these are for the side where there's a little space for eyeglasses. Um, this will cut out the light leak if you choose to you know want to remove or reduce your light leak that's on the goggle. And then of course you get your head strap that's included as well. So it's a three position head strap on the top and the sides. So gives you the best um, basically security in terms of getting it on your head. And then you get um, some Velcro that you're going to stick on to the top here and then these two cheek areas as well as these um, the padding here with this sort of like fake leather. It's very comfortable. The angle here isn't adjustable like it is on the um, uh, you know, Sky O4X for example. So you may want to put some foam or something here if you find this to be too, if you have light leak on the side. Uh, you could probably just add some foam here on the side here and before you put the Velcro on you could you know probably mod that pretty easily to uh, give you a little bit less light leak on the sides if you have a more sharper angled face. Uh, for me this is perfectly fine. I think they have this uh, set to the wider uh, face shape so this is totally fine for me and I'm able to get my glasses in here no problem. Um, if you have a little bit of light leak here on the side they provide this foam here which you can then stick in here and then provide cutouts for your eyeglasses but I didn't really notice any light leak here at all. There's also a piece here for your nose area which you can stick in here to cut that light leak down but um, the screen's bright enough where any light leak that comes in here you can only see if the screen's off. Once the screen's on uh, you don't notice that at all so I just opted to not use any of those at all and this um, the optics that they're using here as you can kind of see there's kind of two like lenses here that focuses that uh, 4.1 inch screen which gives you a 50 degree field of view which is a very wide field of view but they're using a similar setup here as I think what the is on the uh, Fat Shark Scout goggles that I had from like maybe a year ago um, and I had the same problems with uh, this one in terms of being able to see the screen without my glasses on so I had to wear my glasses to be able to see the screen clearly otherwise it was blurry for me. Now in other box goggles that have uses a Fresnel lens instead of this sort of optical system, I um, was able to see the screen clearly and, and in focus uh, without my glasses on. So this had this, I had the same problem with this one as I did with the Scout because when I was using a Scout goggles, I could not focus on the screen without my glasses. Now that that was kind of a similar goggle to this one in that it had like these little areas on the side where you could uh, have space for your glasses. So I was able to put, put those goggles onto my face with the glasses on and see the screen and fly with them no problem. So I think they're using sort of a similar uh, optics here that the Scout's using. And maybe that is kind of why it's this box shape here like where the, I guess this, little, this part right here is maybe a shorter focal length compared to other box goggles where it's a little bit longer. It's going to stick out further. So with that, there is less weight on your face dragging the the uh, front of the goggle down. So I think that's why they went with uh, this style of optics to sort of have less space between the optics and the screen. And in that case, you are going to, if you have, if you wear glasses, you have some sort of prescription, you're going to have to wear your glasses to be able to um, see the screen. But of course, you know, no problem because you know the goggles are designed with glasses in mind. It's just that if you have really wide glasses or really big, and there's some, you know, for example, huge lenses, you may have some trouble getting them in here. I did not have any problems getting my glasses in here, so let's just show you that they just fit in here totally fine. Not a problem at all.
for me and very comfortable and everything was nice and sharp and clear. Obviously with my own prescription in here, it's uh, not an issue at all. Okay, so basically the highlight of the goggle system here is the steady view receiver and I'm not going to go into any sort of like um, a receiver testing because I already did all that in like a previous video which I'll link down in the description. I put a card in the corner here. I compared this receiver to the rapid fire uh, receiver in a um, parking garage which is a fairly uh, challenging test for a diversity receiver and this is using sort of that same kind of technology that rapid fire uses where it's sort of doing the screen uh, frame merging or something like that and so and so you get the same sort of problems that you have with rapid fire so on certain cameras um, certain video transmitters you get like the rolling video problem if you have that with this receiver you just do the same thing you do with the uh, rapid fire you um, just turn, you just change the uh, mode from the, the mix called the mix mode to diver standard diversity mode, and then the receiver will default back to a standard diversity setup where it will just use one one antenna or uh, one signal or the other instead of trying to merge the two signals. But yeah, check out that video. This is a very solid receiver. Um, the performance of this was really similar to Rapid Fire to the point where most people couldn't. You'll see the comments in that video. They couldn't figure out which one was which. So. Um, in a parking garage. So the, the performance is pretty good on this one. And for the cost of this, you know, considering that rapid fire by itself costs $150, this has a rapid fire, you know, receiver, a rapid fire like receiver, pretty similar in performance with a whole goggle setup system here for, you know, maybe like $50 to $60 more, which is a pretty, pretty good deal. But you can also use other receivers in here. So you can just slide this little cover forward. If you don't want to use this, I don't know why you would want to spend the money on this and then use a different receiver when this receiver is already pretty good. But, you know, if you want to use a different one, you can. You can just pop, slide the little cover off and then you can pop this out. You will have to put the goggle into diversity mode, otherwise it won't work. Um, you can just slide it out like this. This is a basically a standard Fat Shark style receiver. You have your USB-C port there for firmware updates in the future. And you just plug it in there. Now obviously the cover here is not going to probably fit most other receivers because they're going to be more bulky and they're going to have like buttons and stuff and, a, and like a screen for changing channels which you're going to have to use so if you do want to use other receivers with this uh, box goggle you're probably going to have to design a different cover for this for um, whatever, whatever receiver that you're going to be using um, but yeah it will work with other receivers. Okay so just a quick look around the goggle. Power buttons here, short, so basically you long press that and it'll turn it on and off. Uh, the, you have basically have a menu button here. You have these two scroll wheels and buttons that I'll show you how they function here in a moment. So they both scroll and also click. And then you have a DVR button here. So those are all the buttons on the top. The way that these buttons work is exactly the same way as they do on the um, O4X goggles and the Esheen. EV300Os, so they've obviously gone to this style of interface, and it's, in my opinion, very intuitive. It's pretty easy to use. It's not as uh, not difficult at all compared to uh, goggles in previous years and other vendors like Amway, for example. Those some of those are pretty hard to use. And then on the bottom, you have a battery bay here for an 18650 battery, which I have, which is what I'm using. A, I'm just I have a Samsung 3000 milliamp hour. Uh, lithium ion battery in here and uh, I can tell you that this uh, the battery lasts like pretty much forever I have uh, been testing this for a little you know a while now and um, I haven't had to charge it and I think the battery is still pretty full so yeah you got a slot here for your um, uh, DVR I think the card uh, micro SD card is up to 64 gigabytes you have your AV and out port here HDMI in and yes this screen does work with uh, SharkBite I did test it um, uh, if you want to use this with shark part, you can you know, with the HDMI in. Uh, you have USB-C here, and this is for charging this battery in here. And uh, you can also just power it off of USB-C. So if you have want to use that cable and you have a power bank, uh, it will try it will it will power off of five volts no problem. And you have your standard DC in here for your Fat Shark style batteries with the barrel connector. Um, I think the input range is two to six S on this input here. So yeah, for a huge variety of um, power options here for this goggle, but for me to keep them nice and lightweight and you know, have to carry a lot of stuff, just get a nice big, like 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, stick it in here, and you're good. And then you can just charge it um, in the goggles, so it works great. 
Do you have a uh, port here for your head tracker? And this does have a head tracker. I don't know anything about how those work. I know that airplane guys do. Um, the Sky Zone and the Eshin, I think EV300O, a lot of the, a lot of goggles have head trackers in them. This one has that as well. So if you need that, this one has that. All right, so I powered on uh, a video source here. Let's go ahead and show you the image here on the screen. I'll power this on. Okay, so you can kind of see here that there's two, like basically two lenses as you go from one side to the other side here. You get like two different images. So basically it just forms a, a, an image for each, uh, basically each of your eyes. So I'm just going to show you the image out of one, just so I can show you how the menus work. And so if you want to use a DVR, you have to have a video source. If you're trying to record just like static, the DVR won't operate. But once you have a video signal, then you can just uh, uh, basically press the DVR button once. Sure, press that. It'll bring up the menu, the OSD, and then press it again, and then it'll start recording. And you can see there on the upper left the timer for the DVR. If you bring up, if you press the DVR button again, it'll bring up the OSD again. You can see it's running. And then to stop the recording, you bring up the OSD menu with the DVR button. Then hit the DVR button again, and that will stop the recording. Now, if you want to change your input sources, you, you uh, basically uh, short press the left scroll wheel and then press it again. And then this brings up your mode menu. So you have RF normal, um, RF racing, RF third party. So if you're using a third party receiver, you have to change it to RF third party. AV input, if you want to use like uh, the um, analog AV input for a different uh, video source, then you have HDMI input. If you want to go to the playback menu for the DVR, you hit that. And then hit return, that will exit out of this menu. Okay, so to get into the uh, main menu of the goggle, you press the short press the menu button, it'll bring up the OC, short press it again. Then you get the settings menu, so you have your head tracker menu, you can change your image settings here, you can go into the DVR here, display settings, system settings here. This is going to the uh, system settings and can change your power. So this is basically the same uh, menu system that's on the uh, SkyZone um, Sky O4X and EV300 O goggles, voltage calibration, RSSI calibration, RF mode. So here you can change it from the mix mode. As you can see, it's on the OST and the second line in the middle. Uh, but you can change it from mix to diversity mode if you want to do that. Um, obviously, I'm going to change it back to the mix mode for best performance. And you can go also change your language here. You can adjust your fan speed. So the, I think the stock fan speed was like... 11 I believe but you can go all up to 15 and it's a little bit louder but um, I wasn't having any issues with fogging so I just lowered that down to about 9 which is a little bit quieter and to go back and hit the uh, menu button so that will exit out and then hit the menu button again and then let's go let's look at the image settings here so if you want to change your um, image mode so I have mine set to bright you can change that there's different modes your standard um, bright, vivid, soft, and then you can also have a user, various user adjustable settings, so three different user adjustable uh, presets, but I like the bright setting. It also will depend on the camera you're using. You might want to adjust this based on your camera, but you can see you can also adjust your brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, and sharpness. Now under the uh, display menu, uh, you can change the OSD timeout. That's the two lines at the top. So you can change it uh, from, say, I think five seconds. I think it goes as low as three seconds. Or you can leave it on. If, if you basically turn the OSD timeout, timeout off, it'll leave it on the screen all the time. So it goes from three, five, ten, fifteen, thirty, forty, fifty, six, up to a minute. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So I think uh, five seconds is fine. You can leave it on there, then it'll go away. You can change the OSD position, transparency, the LCD luminance. Uh, I think that's uh, more or less like the brightness of the LCD screen itself. And then here's where you can change the aspect ratio. So if you have a 4.3 camera, you can change it to this. And you can see that there are now black bars on the left and the right. I'm going to change it back to 16.9. And it looks at the menu. So now if you want to just change your band and channel, just short press the right scroll wheel. Then press short press it again, and then you can see here we can change your channel. If you short press it again, then you can change the band. So the, the 
ban the banded channel number will turn yellow. So we'll go back to our race band one. And that's how you change your bands and channels. Okay, so I think it pretty much covers everything in this video. Uh, super long, but hopefully it covers everything in terms of all your questions. Um, yeah, I think this is really the best one that's out there. The screen's really good, uh, nice and sharp and bright. Um, and of course, you get very good reception with the Steady V receiver. So, all in all, I think this is a very good goggle for the price. And again, as you know, as mentioned in the disclaimer, it's going to depend on your face shape and eyes, and whether you can focus on the screen. So. I can't guarantee that for you, but if you are able to see the image and uh, fit your face well, I think you'll enjoy this goggle. Anyway, the link's down in uh, description for this goggle. Now, if you do buy this from MakerFire, they do give you the sticker kit for free. I don't know how long that'll be. Um, that's the only vendor that's offering the sticker kit for free. And I believe um, uh, there's a coupon code that'll be down there as well. I don't know how long that'll last as well. I'll put the expiration in the video description as well. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.